Hello, thank you for joining us on Call TV News Hour. Hi, I'm Frank Omalape. The Federal Ministry of Finance says it has paid a sum of 156 billion to oil marketers to clear the current fuel scarcity across the nation. It also revealed that it has so far paid oil marketers 500 billion within the last five months as fuel subsidy. The Minister of Finance, Ngozi Okojo Iwala, made this disclosure in a statement by her special advisor and communications, Paul Mwabeku. Given the breakdown of the amount paid so far as fuel subsidy, Okojo Iwala said the government had in December 2014 paid 350 billion to oil marketers, noting that additional 331 billion in foreign exchange differentials had already been released. He said the federal government's commitment to prioritize payment to marketers in spite of revenue constraints has now made the ministry to release 156 billion to the marketers. The statement read, in line with the federal government's commitment to prioritize payment to marketers in spite of uh, revenue constraints, the Federal Ministry of Finance has paid its sum of 156 billion to oil marketers. The Nigerian military says none of the early 300 women and girls rescued from the Sambisa forest is from Chibok. It says all of them are either from Damboa or Bering, also in Burner State. Defense spokesman Major General Chris Olukolade could also not confirm the exact number and identity of others who were rescued from other Boko Haram camps in the forest on Wednesday night. Our correspondent Pio Sami has details. For some days, Nigerian troops have been carrying out raids on Boko Haram positions in the Sambiso forest. Now, the military authorities are prepared to give an update on what they say includes sustained area bombardment by the Air Force. The military says there is no going back on efforts to check the activities of the insurgents. We would like to reassure Nigerians that the momentum of this operation will be sustained until that forest, that is Sambisa forest, is comprehensively cleared and all Nigerians held captive within the bowels of that forest are rescued. There is great hope for the recovery of more hostages from the terrorists as this operation continues. Already, the dislodged and disorganized terrorists have been seen to be in flight in different directions as they run helter skelter in the expansive forest. There is no longer any respite or sanctuary for them. They will be pursued and tracked down, not minding the daunting challenges in the mission, including hundreds of landmines and difficulty being experienced with the, ter with the terrain of Sambisa Forest. It should be noted, however, that the essence of this operation is not for us to kill everybody in sight. We encourage any of the combatants who is desirous to surrender to come out, as the forest will no longer be tenable as a haven for their activities. On the rescue of nearly 300 girls and women from Boko Haram camps, the military spokesman revealed that none of them is from Chibok. He disclosed that more people, including children, were rescued from other camps in the forest on Wednesday night, but will not give a definite number. Already yielding results as troops in the last few days rescued over 200 girls and 93 women, an additional number from various locations in the forest. Over 13 terrorist camps, including the notorious Tokumbere camp in the Sambisa forest, have been captured. Other camps overrun and destroyed by the troops include Wulari, Bukar, Gangala, and Wanbakwe. Jigide, Kotorima, Lagura, Langina Fulani, among others. Several field commanders and full soldiers of the terrorist group have lost their lives. For now, the military says it will sustain the war against terrorists and ensure that the game's reserve is cleared of terrorist camps. It also promised to rescue all those who were captured by Boko Haram. Par Samuel. Core TV News, Abuja. 
Acting Inspector General of Police Suleiman Arashe has assured organized labor of adequate security during the 2015 Workers' Day celebration. Arashe gave the assurance in a message to the workers ahead of the May Day scheduled for Friday. He added that heads of police information nationwide had been directed to deploy personnel and logistics for the celebration. The Inspector General also advised the workers to report any security threats in their locality to the police and other law enforcement agencies. President Golok Jonathan is convinced that members of the People's Democratic Party would dampen the party after the March 28 election would not benefit from the electoral fortunes of the uh, Progressive Congress. He insists that it would be better for them to help rebuild the party for a better route in, in future elections rather than seek to gain from where they did not so. President Jonathan said this while receiving the report of PDP presidential campaign organization at the presidential villa in Abuja. So we must continue to unite as a party, we must continue to work hard so that as we go into the subsequent election 2019-2023 and so on and so forth, PDP will be able to come up strong. Even for the interest of the nation, we need PDP. I still believe that even though we have lost presidential elections and we lost national assembly elections and even governorship elections, massively especially in the northern part, PDP still is a dominant party across the country. Let us not judge PDP by the results for the presidential election. The All Progressive Congress has accused the President Good Luck Jonathan as the administration. Uh, of uh, plotting to hinder a smooth handover of power on May 29. He says it is becoming uh, an, uh, apparent that the incumbent administration will not fully cooperate with the incoming government despite its public posturing in that regard. In a statement issued in Abuja by its National Publicity Secretary, La Mohammed, the party also described as an act of hostility and apparently misplaced aggression, the unnecessary vituperation against the incoming Mohammed Buhari administration by the Jonathan government ostensibly because of the terms of reference of the Buhari Transition Committee. APC argues that the alleged misplaced aggression was part of an orchestrated plot to sabotage the transition. It rejected the continued blackmail by the Jonathan government as a result of the president's concession of defeat, wondering whether the concession, gracious as it was, had now become a shield for all wrongdoings. Justified a statement that the Jonathan administration is plotting to hinder a smooth transition of power. A party said why the outgoing government had earlier issued a murmur to all ministries, departments, and agencies to make sure if their handover notes were ready by April 20, the same government had reversed itself and said the handover notes would not be ready until May 14. The National Orientation Agency had called on Nigerian workers to accord the incoming government the same level of support they gave to Jonathan administration. This is said we will go a long way in ensuring the success of the new administration's program. NOA Director General Michael Mary said in a good message that it continues one which transcend any single administration. He also admonished Nigerian workers to continue to do the right thing by contributing their quota through their daily duties. Right, RTV, it's one president elect Mohammed Buhari uh, to live up to his promises of tackling corruption in the country. The transition monitoring group says it is the least members of the coalition expect from the incoming government. Uh, CMG chairman Ibrahim Ziki Rulahi said at a news conference in Abuja that stronger anti corruption agencies would enable Nigerians to reap the benefit of democracy. The incoming government, particularly the president-elect, has set an agenda for himself. One is uh, total war against corruption. Secondly is uh, combating poverty and creating uh, employment. At least these are laudable projects. 
which uh, they need to be supported. The Vice President-elect Yemiu Shibajo has revealed that solar energy will form the crux of the effort of the Buhari-led administration in the provision of stable power supply to Nigerians. Shibajo made his disclosure after commissioning a 5 megawatts independent power project in Lagos. Our correspondent Abiola Luwoli has more in this report from our studios. Stable power was one of the campaign promises of the president-elect Mohamed Buhari and the build-up of the March 28th presidential pools. But his victory at the pools breaking the drinks of epileptic power supply since topmost priority of the incoming at Buhari administration. Addressing journalists after the tour of a 5 megawatts independent power project in the Ikeja area of Lagos. The Vice President-elect Yemi Bushimbanjo says the incoming administration will focus on renewable energy and the process of providing stable power supply to Nigerians. One of the key features of uh, the incoming administration's power policy is renewable energy, which is solar energy, which is one of the reasons why I'm here. So you got to take a look at it and see, uh, see for myself. Represented by his deputy, Adejoke Orelukwe Adefuluri, Governor Babatunde Fashola claims Lagos will continue to explore ways of generating effective power supply to residents in the state. We are aware that as a responsible government, we have a duty to be innovative, to plan and to execute projects that will improve the lives of our citizens. The Ikeja Independent Power Project is the fifth of its kind to be commissioned by the Fashola administration. With the inauguration of the 8th National Assembly a few weeks away, the speculation that will become the next Senate president has become intense as the APC takes majority status. In this report, Quara State APC stalwarts throw their weight behind the Senate presidency ambition. One of its own, Bokola Saraki, saying he is mostly favored among the contenders. A correspondent has more. As the APC forms majority at the National Assembly, no doubt, the race to become Senate president has become more intense, following speculations of his interest in the Senate presidency. One of the main contenders, Bukola Saraki of Kwara State, has made known his desire in becoming the nation's number three man. The political calculations, according to Saraki's party stalwart, in Kwara favors him. When you look at even from the angle of contribution, and when you look at the exposure and the experience, Senator Bukola Saraki is more or less tested and trusted. And if he is compensated with all these things, I think he deserves it. He is the leader that has the people's at heart. He believes in the progress and development of both this community and individual in the state. And across party divides, Saraki's ambition gets a boost as he is also backed by a PDP stalwart in Quara, Timothy Ibiemi, saying the glory of Saraki being the Senate president is for Quara State as a whole. It will be unfair for me to say that Saraki should not be Senate president. He's from Quara State. He's going to carry the image of the state. He's going to bring more attention to our state. It will bring more uh, economic development to the state. It will bring more honor and dignity to the state. As the clock ticks, Nigeria are eagerly await on who the same presidency will land and the intrigue that may be displayed by the players. It's called TV News Hour. We'll take a short break now. We'll be back with more stories. Join us again. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. This is Scott TV News Hour live from our Lagos studios. For more information on our news and other programs, like our Facebook page, it's facebook.com forward slash Scott TV News. You can also follow at Scott TV News NG.
for live streaming, log on to youtube.com forward slash call TV, leave a space, the news. And now Governor Rocha Zokorocha finally collects certificate of return. The event took place at the Imoj State INEC headquarters with the governor and his entourage, including elected members of the House of Assembly present at the venue to collect their certificate. Governor Rocha Zokorocha have signed and collected the certificate of return, thanked everyone and gave assurance of greater better performance considering the fast that the party which it belongs will now take the mantle of leadership at the federal level. What is is only a vehicle to get to the destiny of governance. And once governance takes place, then one works for all, irrespective of party affiliation. I want to announce for all of you that today I'm the governor, not the governor of APC, but the governor of Limo State. Which means that I'm not the governor of BDP, the governor of Africa, the governor of Akron, the governor of APC. So I speak to you as the governor of Limo State. And the government of the which I know we can for people to enjoy the dividend of democracy, especially now that we count ourselves very lucky that the great Nigerian has emerged as the president and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There are a few people who have. Of his where supporters who cheered him up as he leaves the venue back to his resident, the Imo State Government House. And now the Plateau State Governor Relax Simon Lalong has pledged not to dissolve the seven local government council chairman in Plateau State. Speaking during their solidarity and congratulatory visit to the Governor Relect at the Greenhouse Presidential Lodge in the state, Lalong assured them of his administration's commitments to the rules of law and work with the council chairman in promoting peaceful coexistence among the people of the state. A promise to use the constitutional provision in resolving conflict, which is very important, adding that the loyalty must be for the state, not for their personal gain. And now the Lagos State Election Petitions Tribunal will on Tuesday, May 5, 2015, hold the city an inaugural sitting. The tribunal will sit in one of the family courts on the premises of the recently commissioned Rosalie Nomotosho Court in Ikeja. The secretary to the tribunal, Hafsatu Suleiman, revealed that the tribunal had received 20 petitions already. Suleiman was, however, silent on the judges who make up the panel. Among the petitions received were two from the March 20th senatorial election in the state. Two candidates of the People's Democratic Party, Shegun Adewale and Olabisi uh, Salis Farkas, have approached the tribunal to challenge their defeats. No fewer than 15 petitions arose from the April 11, 2015 House of Assembly election in Lagos State. Though the PDP had earlier alleged irregularities in the conduct of the governorship election in Lagos State, which held 19 days ago, there is, however, no indication that the party is challenging the defeat of its governorship candidate, Jimmy Agbaji, and a party which disagrees with the result of an election is expected to file a complaint within 21 days of such an election. The 19 APC lawmakers spearheading the impeachment move of Ekita State Governor Ayod Daily Fauci made good their promise of abstaining from peace meeting called by an elder statesman and legal luminary at Feba Balola. The lawmakers cited security of threats for their conspicuous absence. Al Feba Balola, the governor of Fauci and representatives of security agencies, however, speak on their roles and the way to chart for peace as the police deny move to arrest the lawmakers. Now three communities in Edo State hosting the College of Education Ikeadolo, now referred to as Tayo Akpata University College of Education, have called for the immediate removal of the provost of the school, Amen Uhwa Wago. 
uh, the community stage of peaceful protests along the main road leading to the institution with the burnt fires masquerade and a small coffin tied with the picture of the provost on it which cast in in debits. The natives complained that the tenor of Amen Uhuangu as the school's provost in the last seven years has mected unnecessary pains on their communities. About 200 youths and the elderly from the communities were waving placards and chanting warlike songs. The vehemently asked Governor Adams Oshomale for the immediate sack of the provost whose administration has become insensitive to the plight of students and the host communities. The major complaint of the protest was the certain strike action of the institution, which they claim is affecting the economy of the communities. The structure and nothing to write about. You understand me? Look at look at how students are at home. They are not doing anything. Nobody is nobody is studying. Even some of them that are there now, when they talk, when they be, when they are talking, I, I'm a brother, you find that these people, it looks as if nobody is teaching them. Some of the students that cry that they are not teaching them. Yes. So we the community we are still crying. So that we don't want a mohua go with that congress brothers. So that they should not become a mohua again. A mohua is a criminal at the bottom of go to this college. Come and destroy this our our institution, this institution. I'm begging the common governor to please come to our hands, come and say, or to please replace Amawango. I'm well willing to leave in this community again. In his response to the allegations leveled by the communities, the embattled provost, Amen Ohuwango, debunked the allegations as he bared his mind on the position of the school. Big rights now, lectures are going on on campus. As I speak, I have not received any petition any emissary, any message from the youth of Ekiadolo. I want to quickly put it on record that Ekiadolo community is not the only community in Nigeria where we have tertiary institutions. This is a civilized society. Anybody that has any grievance or any grievances should channel it the right way. Meanwhile, security operatives were on ground to ensure that the protest did not get out of hand. In the few hours the demonstration lasted. And as a wrap on Call TV News Hour, many thanks for watching. I am Frank Omalape. I'll see you again.